Greetings, beloveds, and peace be with you. I'm Reverend Mitzi, and I'm so glad that you're here. Something within you was calling you to watch. Thank you for answering that divine call, and welcome to Unity of Tempe Online. So today, my message is stepping into the unknown. How do we set goals after 2020? Good question, right? Well, that's hopefully what we're going to uncover today. So here we are. Huh. We're in a new year. Welcome 2021. And today, January the 3rd, is also the 10th day of Christmas. So happy continued Christmas tide, beloveds. We have two more days of Christmas tide right now. Now, how are you feeling? Has it been hard to say Happy New Year this year? It has for me, and I know that it has for Ron. With all that went on in 2020 and the depth of despair that many people are in around the world, a seemingly innocent Happy New Year did not seem like it cut it for us. So instead, to all of you, beloveds, I say, may peace be with you and may peace be with your soul in 2021. So as many of you know, for a very long time, in fact, I think it's getting close to two decades, I have led an annual event at the Franciscan Renewal Center on January the 1st called Start the New Year with New Thoughts. And this is the first time in all that time that I didn't do it. In fact, some of you were even with me when it was freezing cold one year and even chucking it down with rain another year. But this year, it simply was not safe to hold this event. So today though, I'm going to include elements of what I would have done on New Year's Day at the labyrinth, labyrinth. And that includes reflection and meditation and journaling, which are all incredibly powerful ways to start any new year. And it's especially a very important way for us to start a year as heavily weighted as 2021. So I encourage you right now to get some paper or a journal and a pen if you don't already have one in front of you. And I'll wait right here. Oh, wait, before you go, you might also want to grab a tissue or two, just in case. I'll be right here. So welcome back. We're going to begin our process by focusing on gratitude as best as we can for 2020. Now I know at Thanksgiving we also focused on gratitude, but gratitude is such an important spiritual tool that we focus on because it really opens us up. Now I'm going to guide you through a series of questions and invite you to write down your responses. So now think back on 2020, such a very difficult year for the world and, and thinking back on it, well, it, it may bring up a myriad of emotions just as you reflect back on what we all collectively went through. But specifically, I want you to consider some of the things for which you are grateful. I know <laughs> this may sound very difficult. It may even sound a little crazy, but in the midst of the dreadfulness of, of 2020, you will find that there are many things for which you are grateful if you dig deep enough. So beloveds, close your eyes for a moment. That's right, just relax and take a deep breath now. And think of times 
when you were proud of yourself last year? Did you ex adapt to a difficult year with patience and love for humanity? Did you stay healthy? Did you let go of a resentment? Did you learn a new skill? Maybe Zoom. Maybe you got on Facebook. Don't discount it. Those are new skills if you didn't know them before. Were you part of a prayer team? Did you have a shift in perspective about what's really important in your life? Do you have a greater appreciation for loved ones? A greater appreciation for your spiritual community? There be maybe so many things which are filling up your soul now in gratitude. So I invite you to take a few minutes or longer, as long as you like, to make a gratitude list for 2020. And if you like, you can pause this video because I'll be waiting. Welcome back. I can tell you some of the things for which I am grateful and there are so many. Of course, I am grateful for spirit and an ongoing relationship and unfoldment with God. And I am so grateful, so incredibly grateful for my beloved husband, Ron, my home, our the fabulous felines, I could go on and on and on, but I also want to let you know, once again, even though I did at at Thanksgiving, I can't tell you enough how very grateful I am for all of you. The way that you have supported our adaption into going virtual, it has not been the easiest thing to do for any of us, and yet we have been consistent and you have been faithful. And I just wanna give a huge shout out to you for your supportive messages, your texts, your emails, your cards, and your financial support of Unity of Tempe. You know, so many churches have adapted during this time. Some have been going completely virtual, some went virtual, and then they opened up again, and guess what? now they're virtual only again during this entire time it has been our goal to remain consistent and thank you thank you thank you for continuing to allow us to do this so we can remain safe now before we move on to our next process here i want to suggest something that might support us all in really realizing gratitude in a greater way this year. This might be something that you already do in a journal or through another way, but I want to show you something here. What is this? Is this a God box? Well, no, we're going to talk about our God boxes next week, but this is actually a blessing box that was a gift to me yesterday. It's so lovely. Let me open this up. It's, it's decorated. There's like glitter on it. So of course I love it. it matches my outfit. Someone put these little cards in there as well. So lovely. And guess what? Where did this come from? Well, on our walk, there was a little box outside and you can see what the neighbors had put on it. What a beautiful idea to give people an opportunity to share their blessings. And this same neighbor did a similar thing. Actually, it was rocks um, with messages on at Thanksgiving. 
Maybe this is something you want to do for your neighbors and be a blessing. The idea is that we put our blessings in there as, as they come. And then at the end of the year, we have so much to just celebrate and be grateful for. So now, beloveds, we move on to the release stage of this process. Now, it's understandable if there are many things from 2020 that are still deeply concerning. For while the year has changed, we're still very much in the midst of a global pandemic. Yet amid this, there are things, are there things from 2020 you are willing to release? Are there people, places, institutions, or situations towards which you're carrying resentments, negativity, or anger, and you are willing, at least willing, to take a step in releasing the, that anger and that negativity? Is there emotional pain or physical pain that you're holding on to that you're willing to release? Are there areas in your life that, that need forgiveness and you're willing to have a go at releasing and, and making some amends perhaps and doing some forgiveness? What needs to be let go of in your life? So as you close your eyes, beloveds, taking a deep breath, getting very calm and centered in the divine, I invite you to examine some of the things that are still troubling you from 2020 and which you are willing, willing to release now. And when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes and write down what you're going to release today. You can pause this video and I'll be here when you get back. Well, welcome back. You're doing beautifully, beloveds. So this is the time where if we were at the labyrinth, we'd blow bubbles. It's probably everyone's favorite time. I bring tons of bottles of bubbles and we blow bubbles as a metaphor for our releasing, for letting go. Now, Zephyrin has a beautiful jazzy version of a song for us to enjoy that's traditionally associated with release, and we're going to listen to that now. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and the days of old anxiety. For old anxiety, my dear, for old anxiety, we'll take a cup 
Yes, beloveds, we release, we let go. We let go of those things which are not serving us anymore. We are willing to move forward unencumbered. We release, we let go, we let the Spirit run our life. We're only here for God and we are free in the Spirit to quote the beautiful song of Ricky Byers Beckwith. So now we move into the part where we allow Spirit to guide us to the kind of year that we want to create in 2021. Now usually I invite us to set very tangible goals to manifest our best year yet. This year I'm guided to do something a little different. As I mentioned in one of my previous messages, it's like the universe sent us to our rooms in 2020, pleading with us to think about what collectively we as humanity have done to the world, have done to the environment, and most of all, how we treat one another. Now, many goals require the world to be as we knew it before COVID. Yet it's important for us to adapt our goals to the times that we're living through right now. And remember, it came to pass. We will not always be in this time. It always says in Scripture, it came to pass. It didn't come to take up residence. We are living through a season right now, but we have to adapt to that season. That's how we survive and thrive in this season. Now, Ron gave me a really funny book for Christmas called I Could Pee on This and Other Poems by Cats. Yep, you heard that right. I Could Pee on This and Other Poems by Cats. <laughs> now there's a poem called That Top Shelf that jumped out to me as I flipped through the pages. I think I could jump to that top shelf. I want to jump to that top shelf. I know I can jump to that top shelf. I am jumping to that top shelf. Hmm. I missed that top shelf by a good six feet. And now everything is on the floor and I'm left wondering why people even bother buying china if it breaks so easily. Funny? Yes, it's a hilarious little poem. And yet I think it's so much deeper. Sadly, it speaks to me, at least, as a bone-chilling summary of how people worldwide thought they could outsmart and outrun even and outjump 2020. We'll just jump from COVID to no COVID. We'll just pretend this isn't really happening. Now, the China is metaphorically smashed everywhere. There is no true end in sight and still many are in denial, trying to jump to the top shelf. I think I can jump to the top shelf right away. I can do it. Now it's important for us in unity to remember that wishful thinking and even positive thinking is not the same as science. Now I, as you know me, I am all about being optimistic. I'm all about setting goals. Every January, pretty much, we set goals. I have done for decades now. I'm all about affirmative prayer and believing in the power of our thoughts to create our and our words to create our reality. Yet I'm also about doing our part for humanity, creating our reality while doing our part for humanity, creating our reality while doing our part for humanity, creating our reality while doing our part for humanity. Our for humanity. There you go, Zephyrin. Free song for you, free song idea and title. <laughs> now remember, beloveds, we are co-creators with God. And apparently, God had a few ways of getting our attention last year that we had no idea were coming down the pipeline. Now this year, 
with so much up in the air, we're being called above all to be adaptable and patient. And with the current situation, let's look at some setting some goals that may actually be attainable for us this year. So now on your screen is a list of eight areas people often set goals in. And I'll briefly go through them, giving some prompts. Then I'll invite you to pause the video so you can take time to set your own goals. Let's start with one that is on many people's minds at this time of year. Health and fitness. What are your goals in health and fitness? Perhaps it's everyone's favorite, weight loss. Is it time to lose a few pandemic pounds? Perhaps it's to strengthen your immune system. Perhaps it's to find some workout videos on YouTube or on Amazon Prime and actually do the exercises. And move on to spirituality. And remember, at any time, you can either stop this video or you can watch the whole thing. And then at the end of when I've read all of the uh, categories, you could stop it then. Spirituality. Perhaps your goals this year are uh, to actually put into action some of the things in my messages. Perhaps it's to read more spiritual books or join our Zoom prayer call, or I don't know what your spiritual goals are, but you will be guided by spirit as to what they are family. Now, perhaps with family, it's to not sweat the small stuff, especially with those you live and also those that you're conversing with from afar. Perhaps it's to use more technology to reach out. Now, I know many of you have been doing that. You're, you're Zooming, you're Facebooking, you're duoing, duoing, you're, fa you're doing everything. And because I, I, you know how I know, I see you on Facebook. I see you on Zoom, some of you, not everyone. So maybe it's time to come on over and learn more of that so you can connect with your family more. I don't know what your family goals are, but you will be guided. Career and job. Did 2020 cause your career to go awry? Ah, <sighs> well, <laughs> we can attest to that, Ron and I, it's, been an interesting year. <laughs> Is it time to look into other opportunities? Is it time to let spirit guide you? What is it that appeals to you? Write down some goals and some ideas there. Finances. What are your financial goals this year? We know that as we give, we receive, and this is true in every single area of our life. I have found this to be such a absolutely foundational spiritual principle in my life, that as I give, I do indeed receive. If 2020 zapped your bank account because your job went awry, this is the time to ask spirit for guidance as to what gifts and talents you have that could be useful and bring you financial rewards during this time. Social network. Wait, social network, what is that? Oh, where we get to be social with one another. Yes, we, we somehow remember that in the past, don't we? Now, as with your family though, perhaps more safe forms of communication can be embraced to stay in touch with your friends. Perhaps it's, uh, this is a year to write down how many times a week your, your goal is to call, text, email, even snail mail people, just to let them know you're thinking of them or thinking of your family. Maybe you wanna initiate a reading group on Zoom or a connection group on Zoom. Let us know, we can maybe help you through Unity of Tempe with that. Our beloved MGM has really adapted well to doing a class for us online and we are grateful for that. I'm sure she'll be picking that up again soon. Now your physical environment. What steps can you take to make your home the place that you absolutely love to be? 
Are there things that you're tolerating in your home? You're like, oh, I don't really like that. Are you, are you, are you ready to declutter? Write down some goals in that area. Entertaining activities. Oh, <laughs> kind of like social network. Entertainment, something we kind of remember in the distant future, right? Going to concerts, going out to eat with friends. Things we're not really doing right now. But what are your goals during this time, this season when we're being asked and it's so important for us to stay at home and stay safe, to find lightness and perhaps even escape? Is it reading? What kind of reading? Movies? What kind of movies? Spending more time playing with your beloved animal family members? That's brought me great joy. You know, we have a new, a new feline in our home, a young little kitty, and playing with him is just, it's wonderful. It is indeed entertaining. But write down some of the ways that you can be um, enriched in entertainment this year. A lot of people have been watching online lectures from, from fabulous people and they've been watching ballets and concerts. There's a myriad of things if we just open our eyes to look for them. So now, beloveds, I invite you to just take a deep breath. Ah. So now take some time to write down some goals. And I'll be waiting right here when you return. So welcome back. If you didn't come up with goals in all the areas, don't be discouraged. You can always come back later. Trust that all will be revealed to you in divine timing. And so now we come to our word for the year. Ask Spirit which God quality is to be your word for the year. And it might be something like, Love, kindness, hope, gentleness, joy, peace, abundance, courage, wisdom, life, flexibility, forgiveness, patience, creativity. Now those are merely suggestions to get you started. One may resonate with you deeply, or it may be a word I haven't even mentioned that bubbled up through your soul. And so I invite you now, beloveds, to close your eyes and listen deeply, allowing spirit to reveal the word for the year for you. And a word from me to you about this. There may be one word that pops right up and you think, yes, that's the one. Listen very, very, very carefully because there may be one right underneath it that is the one that's really trying to push through. And maybe that you like the first one and you're like, yeah, I love that one. And the other one maybe, yeah, but I'm really your word. Listen carefully to allow your soul word for this year to permeate your being.
And now when you have this word, write this God quality in your journal and be sure to also write it where you can see it daily. Invite this word to guide and support you, not only in manifesting your goals, but in all aspects of your life this year. Now, if a, if a word did not immediately speak to you, be patient. It will be revealed in God's perfect time. And I affirm that it will absolutely be revealed by next week. Why by next week? And I also affirm that you'll, if you didn't get all of the exercises completed during this message today, that you'll have them completed by next week because next week we're delving even deeper into seeing what Spirit has in mind for us as we kick off this unusual new year. Now, beloveds, let's anchor this time in prayer. Loving Mother, Father God, we are so grateful for this opportunity to come together. So very grateful for this time as we enter into this new year of 2021 to do so, absolutely seeking Spirit's guidance for our life. We let go, we release, and we allow all that is ours to do in this challenging season on planet Earth to be revealed for us. We know that our goals reflect the divine presence, the divine presence of the Christ in us. And so we listen carefully. Even if we've already written th down things, we, we reflect on them during this week. We review them. We take part in this important spiritual opportunity that we have before us. We're so grateful. We lift up all on the front lines of COVID. We lift all who are in grief, who are suffering in body, mind, spirit, and financially. We send our prayers and blessings around the world, and we know that they come back to us, blessing us. We also lift up Joe's family especially, and his beloved sister Martha, who is in the hospital right now with COVID. We lift up their entire family and all of our beloved community of Unity of Tempe, and each and every single one who may be going through any challenge whatsoever right now. We simply see the highest and the best occurring for each and every person. In gratitude, we release this prayer, knowing that it is answered, we let go and know it is so. And together we say, and so it is, amen. And so beloveds, I am so very grateful for your generous financial contributions to support your beloved community, Unity of Tempe Online. As we start this brand new year, let's be gracious and generous because Spirit loves cheerful, gracious, generous givers. As we give, we receive. As we give, we receive. As we give, we receive. And there is no amount too big or too small. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Showers and prayers of blessings on our financial prosperity for all of us. And so, beloveds, let us now close with our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, all is well, and we are grateful. Beloveds, I love you. If you didn't catch everything in the message, you can go back as many times as you want to review it. Let others know who might be helped by these messages and bring your journal with you online next Sunday because we're going deeper. Blessings upon your week, beloveds.